This is Jay Wells. Uh, welcome back to Jay's Office Hours. Uh, it, we are now in February. I don't know how that happened. Although it did feel like January lasted 753 days. I don't know why that month felt so long. But here we are in February, and that means that it's time for me to give you uh, some more wisdom about writing, because um, I try and do this every month. Sometimes I manage it more often, um, and uh, but at least once a month I try and give you something to chew on. Um, and today we're going to talk about sort of a new approach to plotting that I just figured out for myself. I don't have a name for it. Um, but I've talked before in my videos about how I write my books out of order and I tend to be a very scene focused writer. Um, I start out my drafts or a collection of just scenes that occur to me. I get them down on paper and then from that collection of random scenes, I figure out what the story is. Um, but the book I'm working on right now, which is the fifth Prosperous War series, which will be called Gravecraft. Um, I have been sort of struggling to wrangle the story. There's a lot of threads happening, um, you know, in the fifth book of a seven book series. At this point, there are a lot of stories I'm bringing forward from previous books. There are, are stories I'm setting up for the last two books because we're sort of entering a new um, arc towards the end of the book. So I was sort of like, ah, I kind of know what's happening and I know a lot of different things, but I can't make them sort of weave together. So what I decided to do was back up a little bit and um, do a process of sort of writing what I know about the storylines um, and figuring out from that where I need to go and what I'm missing. And what I did was, so um, in any novel, uh, especially one that's part of a series where you're building a lot of different storylines, you're going to have, I mean, maybe like, you know, 10 different storylines working or more, depending on how many characters you have and what's going on. So you have generally like the main sort of bar that all the other storylines hang off of. And in my books, that's typically a crime. So the, the team of magic enforcement agents are trying to solve a specific crime, but Woven through that crime are a bunch of other storylines. There's um, relationship um, issues between different characters that are explored. There's subplots where I'm building up storylines that are coming or wrapping up ones that were in previous books. And all of these storylines sort of weave together to create this cohesive master story that is the novel. Um, so what I decided to do was... Um, Break down the arcs of each of these storylines. Uh, pretty down and dirty, easy. I don't like doing, you know, out, I hate outlines. I, I really hate structure, I think is the, the, the thing. Like anything remotely related to like boxing in potential, I don't like. I hate Excel. I don't like typical outline structure, you know, the Roman numeral one and then the ABC. I hate that. So what I basically did was... I created a document and number one, um, the crime in this book, the crime that kicks off the story, I'm not giving anything away cause this is literally what happens in chapter one. Um, a grave is robbed and my, um, the team, uh, Kate Prospero and her team are brought in because, um, it's involved in the magic trade in Babylon, Ohio. So the first thing I did was write grave robbery. And then I wrote what I knew, you know, did the team gets called to the scene? This is what's revealed from there. I know that they're going to go meet with this person and they'll meet with this person. They'll interview this. They'll chase this person down this lead, you know, so I kind of write down what I know about that particular thing. But then I also did that for the storyline of the person I know who robbed the grave. So I wrote, X, I'm not telling you who did it, um, X robs grave. And then I write down everything I know about why that person robbed the grave and what they do, uh, what the team doesn't know yet. Um, so I know the whole background of that character's arc um, connected to that crime. Um, but then there's other storylines happening, like, um, uh, for example, if... You may not have read the fourth book, but Kate's brother, Danny, is starting a brand new school in this book. 
So I know that there's going to be a storyline around him being in this new school and what happens there. So I was like, he starts school, but then this happens and then that. So I basically kind of go down all the main storylines that I can think of um, uh, for each of the, the major characters that I need to touch and whatever. And I just sort of write down a pared down outline for each of those stories. So then what I can do is I can look for opportunities to combine storylines and scenes. So let's say that my main character, Kate Prospero, is going to go um, interrogate a suspect about the grave robbery. But I know I also have a storyline happening about um, this coven leader who's got some side thing going on. So that's an opportunity for me to know when I'm writing the scene with this interrogation, the person she's interrogating is going to let slip a detail about that story. So it allows me to kind of keep in my head all these storylines that I'm juggling um, and understand the arc of each of those storylines, where I'm headed for each of them, so that when I'm writing, um, I can say, okay, I'm going to write a scene today with this interrogation. Oh, this is an opportunity to build that storyline and expose something about this relationship that's been happening um, to just sort of help me have a direction. Because after I have a certain, I have like, you know, a hundred pages written on this novel. And that's about the time that I need to start figuring out the story um, or I can't move forward. So this down and dirty kind of quick plotting, it's really, it's not plotting. It's really just writing the like, story arcs down. It's sketching them out so that as I'm writing, I can um, move forward. Now, typically I also use a storyboard, which is where I, um, here, I'll show you. Hold on, let me grab it. So this is a storyboard. Which book is this? Uh, okay. Well, this is a this is an initial storyboard I did for this book, and I basically you know plot out um, scene by scene what happens, what's the goal of each scene, so I can kind of look at the whole structure. I can do that now that I've done this other process, um, because now I know all the different storylines that I need to weave into that board. I don't know. Is that a new thing? It may not be. It's new for me. I've not done that before, but I feel like I have a much better handle on the story because at the beginning when I'm working, I feel very, I always feel very anxious that the story's never going to come together. Um, but at a certain point after I've got some scenes written and I've really thought about it, like it kind of gels and then I'm like, okay, I can see the story now. And that's kind of where I'm at right now because of that process. So try it. I don't know. If it doesn't work for you, you know, at least maybe you learned something about your story. Um, that's my tip for the day. Just do a down and dirty um, arc for each of your storylines so you can kind of understand how to weave everything together. Um, this is Jay Wells. If you have questions, leave it in the comments. Uh, check out my website at www.jaywells.com. Subscribe to this channel. Um, I've got a lot of cool stuff planned this year. I've got some things coming next week. I'm going to do a reading from my book that's coming out next week. High Lonesome Sound. Um, and uh, I've got more. I've always got good tips for you. Because uh, I'm always learning about writing. So I try and learn new things and bring them to you. So subscribe so you never miss one. I hope you're having a good month so far, and I hope that no matter what, you are happy with your writing. Have a good day.